morning, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am in my next door neighbor, Ben's garage, and this is where we are raising our baby ducks, our baby chicks, and our baby turkeys for the year. I said in a previous video that I don't have a safe raccoon proof place to raise the birds, and I don't have room inside my house, and plus, both of my dogs are waterfowl retrievers, they're standard poodles, and their instinct to go for birds is intense. So my neighbor graciously offered me space in his garage and that's where we're raising the birdies. So on that recent video where I talked about raising poultry, I explained that we've never raised turkeys before. And someone commented that she raises turkeys years, year after year and that they absolutely love mealworms. And if you want to train your turkeys to come when you call, mealworms are a great way to train them and a great protein rich treat. Turkeys need a higher concentration of protein in their diet than chickens, and it's really important that they get sufficient um, insect intake. And mealworms are a really, really easy, efficient strategy to produce extra protein for almost no cost. So I wanna say thank you for the suggestion that we raise mealworms. I am going to be doing that this year. Let's add it to the bees and the worm bin and the soldier fly larva and the ducks and chickens and turkeys. Let's just add one more thing. But actually raising mealworms is quite easy and they use up kitchen scraps. So after the initial purchase of the mealworms, there's basically no cost to it if you do it right. And it provides a wonderful supplement to the bird's diet and reduces any overall cost of feed that I may otherwise be purchasing. So let me talk to you about how to set up a mealworm grow container and what ours is going to look like. So mealworms are a beetle larva. They take anywhere between two and five months to complete their life cycle from an egg all the way to the mature beetle. The temperature at which you raise your mealworms really um, determines the speed at which they go through complete metamorphosis from egg all the way to beetle. The stage at which you want to feed them is the larva stage. Um, I will say that my husband and one of my kids is just 100% nope on handling mealworms. They do kind of trigger that instinctual like heebie-jeebie sensation for a lot of people, but they're totally harmless and you can handle them. They are a little creepy crawly though. So the larva stage like this is where your poultry are going to go absolutely nuts over them. And they're really, really easy to raise. So the initial input is gonna be my purchase of the mealworms, which I got at my local feed store. This is 200 mealworms, which was the largest amount I could purchase. And it was a whopping six bucks. So it is not cost effective to purchase these over and over and over for your birds. It is only cost effective if you raise them yourself. So I have my initial investment in the larvae. I'm going to not be feeding these, to my poultry. I'm going to be letting them pupate and then turn into beetles. And then those beetles will lay eggs that will hatch into even more larvae. One mature mealworm beetle can lay 500 eggs in her lifetime. So you really get a, a rapid proliferation and a good sustainable source of food. So these guys are not gonna be feed. They are going to be the breeders for my future stock. So how do you raise them and how do you care for them? Well, the first thing you need is a container. And as you can see it from the purchase container, you need air holes in it. You can use a, like a glass aquarium or you can use any kind of leftover tub of something. You can buy a storage tub. I am actually using, hang on a second, a jumbo ice cream container. This is what happens when you have a lot of kids. We go through ice cream pretty fast. So, the uh, ice cream tub works really well for a start. Now, eventually I will potentially expand and need more containers or a larger box, but this is a great starting size. I started with punching holes in the lid. I just used an awl and there's sufficient holes for them to get enough um, oxygen in there. So you wanna start number one with your container. As a fan of permaculture, I would propose using something out of your recycle bin rather than purchasing something. Now, mealworms can climb the side of the container, but they can only go up about two inches from the substrate that you'll be putting in here. So think about that for the height of your container. You don't wanna fill it so full of their bedding that they can then climb out over the top. So I have my container. I wanna make sure it's really clean and dry. And then I need to add a substrate. Now the substrate is 
dual purpose. It provides bedding for them, but it also is an additional source of food. So you wanna use one of the following things. You wanna use a wheat bran, which you can purchase. You wanna use something like rolled oats, which again, an initial purchase. And I am using rolled oats here. And I just wanna put them in, just a couple of cups. But you can use all kinds of free things as well. And one of the recommended free things to use is the crumbs from the bottom of your bags of cereal. So I'm gonna be using that. My youngest kid really likes shredded wheat, and so I'm gonna put shredded wheat crumbs in here from the bottom of the bag. And you could use other things like if you have uh, old expired pasta, any other kind of like wheat-based or oat-based product that is not sugared, and you don't wanna use things like cracker or chip crumbs that have salt added to them. So you don't want something salty, you don't want something that's sugary that will attract ants. You wanna keep it to uh, unsweetened cereal crumbs or um, other kinds of crumbs at the bottom of your bag of oats, or what have you, or you can purchase oats or you can purchase wheat bran at the feed store, it's quite cheap actually. So that is your substrate. So this is not only a nice dry bedding, but it is also additional food. Okay, so to my container, I'm gonna add my mealworms. You can see here, I've had them in this little container for a few days, so I fed them a slice of potato, and I really, really love it. I'm gonna add them to the container. I don't wanna drop them from too high, because even though they have an exoskeleton, they are like babies and they're kind of delicate. So I wanna just gently turn them out. And put them in here. Okay. Now to this, I need to add additional food. You want to add food that has a little bit of moisture so that the mealworms get sufficient moisture in their diet, but you don't want to add something so wet and soggy that it molds quickly. There are two ideal things to add, and one is potato slices and the other is carrots. You could also feed them things like bananas or you could feed them um, bread that has been soaked a little bit, but not too much. And again, those things kind of mold more quickly. And if you don't want to have to change the substrate in the bedding very often, consider using carrots and potatoes. Now for me, We eat a lot of carrots and we eat a lot of sweet potatoes and we eat a lot of potatoes. So I have a lot of peelings and these are great. This is something that would otherwise go in your compost. For me, it would go in my worm bin, but I have more than I need for my worm bin. This is a great way to take a waste product and to turn it into food for my poultry. So when I put my peelings in here, you just wanna sprinkle them on the top. And then I have some potatoes um, that I dug from my garden in the fall that <clears throat> I hate to say I forgot in the back of my pantry and they got real sprouty and shrivelly and I could have planted them out in my garden but I have sufficient seed potatoes so instead I slice them I'm gonna lay them in here just like that and that's all you have to do and once they consume the bulk of this you just continue to feed them so now I'm gonna put the lid on and again the speed at which they pupate and reach adulthood and complete their life cycle is determined by the temperature. So the colder your house, or if you stick them outside, the colder they get, the more everything slows down. So if you wanna create a good rapid breeding stock, consider keeping them around 70 degrees. I'm actually gonna be keeping them um, on my kitchen counter. Although my house is cooler than 70, that means I will have an eye on them all the time and I can throw in those scraps to feed them. Now, how do I go about harvesting the mealworms to feed to the birds? When you put a potato slice on top, or you could put a piece of a carrot, very quickly, the larvae will sift up through the substrate and latch onto that potato. And so what you get is a really handy system for separating out the larvae, which you want to use as feed, from the pupae, which are sessile and not moving, from the adults, which you want to save for your breeding stock. And so you can get a slice of potato and literally just lift it out and it'll be covered in mealworms, shake them off into a cup, and that's what you feed your birdies. So if you are considering raising your own poultry and you want to add additional protein to their diet, Consider raising mealworms. Consider also raising something sustainable like black soldier fly larvae. I know that can be a little unpalatable to folks because you um, typically wanna feed them things like meat scraps, they really like that. The raising of mealworms is really odor free. It's really simple. Once you get over the heebie-jeebie factor, they are gonna use up your vegetable kitchen scraps really nicely and create that rich additional source of protein that helps your poultry thrive, but also helps create a closed loop on 
on your permaculture system, where you are able to cycle waste products into food, feed them to your poultry, get a yield from your poultry, keep everything on site. If you have any tips or advice you would like to share about your poultry raising experience, particularly about sourcing your own feed, I would love to hear it in the comments. And I will be back for my permaculture garden tomorrow. Thanks.